The bullying thing worries me greatly. We'll talk about that. Dark down here. It's, it's quite poor. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ian J. Cole. This channel is all about music and art. And I've been following uh, a story that's been unraveling on YouTube since uh, mid-December really and that's about a chap called Rob Chapman. Greetings, I am Rob Chapman. Now unless you're a guitarist you may not actually know who Rob Chapman is. Um, he's a YouTuber and a musician, he, he plays in two or three bands the, the sort of music that Rob plays uh, is sort of how you would probably call it metal. So his style of music is definitely not mine. Clearly, the guy can play and he has a massive following on YouTube. Um, he currently has, as of today, which is beginning of February, he has 735,000 followers on YouTube. So he's a YouTuber. Um, and he is also intrinsically linked to Anderson Guitars, um, a music shop uh, down in Guildford, in the UK, mainly through his relationship with their managing director, who is a chap called Lee Anderton. And I have met Lee Anderton. We were members of the Music uh, Industry Association and Lee Anderton is, uh, is one of the big wigs in that organization. Um, and we were nominated for Best Small Retailer uh, when they, when I think Anderton's that year, this was 2015, when they were nominated for Best Large Retailer or something like that. So we, we you know, we were at, we were at a dinner and I was, he wasn't on our table, he was on the top table and we were down by the door somewhere really. Uh, but I did have a very nice chat with the guys from PRS. Anyway, so we have met, although he probably won't remember me and wouldn't know me from Adam. This spat, this uh, internet trolling, as shall we call it, um, all seemed to kick off from a very small YouTuber uh, from Ireland, a guy called Keelan, who has a channel called KDH TV. Rob Chapman. You've got to hand it to him. He's a visionary, a pioneer, an innovator. And by this I mean he's the only person to my knowledge to threaten his very own fans with not only legal action, but with public humiliation. And he pretty much called out uh, Rob Chapman for a whole host of things. Some of it may have been justified, some of it not. I'm not going to get into that. What I will do is I'll put the links down below so you can look at those videos yourself. And and what has happened is a lot of people have sort of jumped on the bandwagon with opinions uh, and as just as I am about to do here, really. But I, I, I actually felt that it would be quite a good idea to take it from a slightly different aspect, um, mainly because for the last seven years I have been a music retailer and there's a lot of criti there's been a lot of criticism of uh, Rob Chapman's guitar company a, com a company called Chapman Guitars they've been going for about 10 years Rob Chapman's got a massive following on YouTube as do Anderton's the music shop I mean on their main guitar channel uh, they have 622,000 followers so they're a, they're a big player in YouTube. So one of the UK's biggest online retailers. Um, and clearly that has been helped by the videos that um, Lee Anderton and Rob Chapman have put out over the years. Uh, oh, greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. <laughs> And we are home away from home. No, no, we're um, at Anderson's. This is sorry, Anderson's. Yeah, Anderson's, not really at NAM 2020. It's sitting in a little booth with a big backdrop behind us. Um, and look who it is. 
uh, of all the people I should run into <laughs> on the first day of NAM while we're shooting videos, it's Rob Chapman, aka Chappers. Hello. Um, and look, it's Lee Anderton from Andertons. They go out as the Captain and Chappers. I've, I've seen a few of their videos, uh, and they and they, you know, they've got a massive following. What happened with this little YouTuber? Uh, actually, he's not so much a little YouTuber as of today, because I think his channel has grown to about 5,000 uh, users, um, and he's been able to monetize the channel. So maybe that was his intentional goal, was to actually call out Rob Chapman and then grow his channel. Um, if that was the case, that's maybe not the way it should have happened. Anyway, you can watch Keelan's video linked down below, and what happened then is other people came out of the woodwork expressing similar sort of negative comments about Rob Chapman. That, in effect, galvanised Rob's fans on YouTube to call out these people. And my understanding is that Keelan from KDH did have some pretty nasty things said about him so much so that he was scared and he took down his video. It is now back up because other people have accused Rob Chapman of bullying. I think you can make your own mind up on that. Uh, that's not that's not what I w would particularly like to discuss. To give you a little bit of background, I f I'm not a guitarist. I'm a keyboard player that plays guitar, although I've been playing guitar for 20 years. I first came across Rob Chapman in 2011 at uh, an Exeter analog and digital music expo uh, where he was he had a very small chapman guitar stand uh, and i had a brief chat with him about the guitars struck me as a very personable person nice guy um and he also did a uh, what was called a master class about being a musician and being a youtuber which for me opened up some of uh, it opened my eyes to to, to some of the, the sort of ways that as, as a musician you can make money. Greetings, hello. Oh, you're too kind, you're too kind. No, no, no. Oh, you're too kind, no, no, too kind. Uh, I'm Chappers, otherwise known as the Monkey Lord. I'll tell you a story. You walk into a guitar store, or maybe you walk into some other exciting restaurant or something, and you see a guy and he's an amazing guitar player and he looks like he's got some money and uh, he seems kind of self-fulfilled, spiritually aware, a happy kind of person. He could be a dude or a dude -ess. You want to be that person. This is the goal of what I'm going to talk about today. It's about sort of self-fulfillment as a musician, utilising the modern ages, new media to make musicians business people and then give them some money because musicians have a hard time feeding themselves and their families. But so he gave a, a really good chat. And every so often I've watched his videos. Uh, in fact, when I first started to do guitar repairs, it was one of his videos that I used out a hardtail uh, Stratocaster. Um, so thank you very much for that, Rob, if you ever see this. I don't quite know when his relationship with Lee Anderton started from Anderton's guitar shop, but certainly over the last few years, they've done lots of content together. One of the things that's worth discussing is when you have what seems to be, you know, people were calling Rob Chapman a bully, uh, and then you have, and, the, and we're currently seeing um, a massive backlash. I mean, some uh, other videos that I've been uh, watching over the last few weeks have said that he's losing thousands of subscribers. I don't know whether that's true or not because I didn't check the, the demographics beforehand. And there, there are always two sides to a story with this sort of stuff. But it does seem that you, every so often we see these sort of high profile YouTubers, people start to take them down for a whole whole host of reasons. I mean, and, and Rob did come out with a, his, his own take on the KDH video. Uh, called Rob Chopman My Truth, where I have to say he does come across as slightly arrogant. Sometimes it is important when you have as much online power as I do, you can never give to the right charity when you're a public person. You can tell this upsets me. Yeah? I think it's important to say I donate regularly and I donate a lot. 
If you don't like people that stand up to bullies, I don't care. <laughs> Get off my channel. <laughs> I'm allowed to buy guitars. First of all, I own a business that deals with music, so I get good tax breaks on gear. And secondly, I demonstrate for the biggest online musical merchants on the planet. I get a really good discount. Yes, Forbes featured me. Yes, I have money. Um, my channel is doing great. In fact, it's on the rise, not on the decline. <laughs> he starts by saying that I don't have a degree from Walter Bear. I don't need one. <laughs> I'm a professional musician. Uh, this year alone, I've been in the charts three times. Playing guitar on it, you can hear me all over it, it's in the charts. I, I'm a professional musician. And I don't think that he necessarily handled that very well. Uh, that didn't really help his case. I mean, and there's been quite a bit of criticism about Chapman guitars, about their reliability uh, and all of that sort of thing. I will. I, one thing I must say is I have never played a Chapman guitar. Uh, the only time that I ever saw them was at that show in 2011, where they were a very young company, um, and they're not. And Chapman guitars are not a cheap product by any stretch of the imagination. But actually, I have found a couple of videos about an an, uh, an, an American, uh, what's called a mom and pop music shop, very very much similar to the sort of shop that I and my wife ran here in Yorkshire, uh, and they were a Chapman dealer up until 2017, I think it is. And I'm gonna include a little bit of video of them um, explaining why they stopped being a Chapman guitar dealer, and also their take on the reliability of some of the Chapman guitars, and we'll do that now. Howdy y'all. Hi guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. <laughs> uh, question, why have you quit selling Chapman? I thought I read somewhere that Gibson was 520 million in debt. King Henry should be drawn and quartered and then tarred and feathered and then banished. Yes, and we oh. also got a the same question from Ronnie Nose and... Yeah, on... uh, AN73. So Ronnie yeah. Nose, hi, why no more Chapmans? AN73, why no more Chapman guitars at RNA? Yeah. So we had three questions about that. Well, um, yeah. And uh, one joking. So. Yeah, one was a joke. Steve <laughs> W. So, uh, yes, we quit selling Chapman's. It's been a while. It was back mm -hmm. end of last year, I guess. I mean, I had made the decision end of last year that we weren't going to order anymore. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really make it official until January of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it was just um, logistically, it was a big issue to order Factory Direct to have mm -hmm. to wait uh, five to seven months for a big order to come in and uh, from a money standpoint you know we got to pay for that up front we're committing a big chunk of cash up front to wait seven five to seven months to have the stuff come in mm -hmm. and it was it was just a big capital outlay and there's no QC in between the factory and us so that means we had to do all the QC and sometimes repairs on guitars and and setups and so that was time and money for us to work on the guitars coming in i had quite a few that had issues you know electric electric stuff wiring issues things and so um, they're also a really young company and so the dealer support really wasn't there because of the nature of factory direct so if i had a guitar that had a problem or didn't have a part or need to repair a part i couldn't just call korea and get a single bridge or something replaced Mm -hmm. and Chapman couldn't send me one because they didn't have any in England. So, you know, they're young and a young, inexperienced company, and so dealing with dealers was a new thing for them. And so for the time and the money, which was significant, we invested a significant amount of money for the size of store that we are, which is a small mom and pop store, mm -hmm. and the energy and promotion that we put into it, when it was all said and done, we just didn't get the return out of it that we wanted. Um, and that's basically it. <laughs> yeah. And to continue on would be, you know, logistically just not practical for a store our size. So that's basically it. It's just business. Yeah. And uh, just yeah. normal business. Normal business, you know, with, with young companies and it just, it's a, it's a crapshoot. You don't yeah. know with a, a, a company that's been around a long time like PRS or Gibson or Fender or, you know, Schecter or ESP or you have, Kind of a track record to figure out what's going on, what to expect with any young company. And it's, you know, with, I'm talking, you know, CMG, 
Acacia, Chapman, you know, Diamond, there's companies that haven't had a very long track record. You really don't know what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> it might be awesome. And we're a young it company okay. yeah. business and so we're trying to, you know, with the market and trying to just stay in business ourselves. So being able to be wise with our investments is mm -hmm. very important to stay afloat. Yeah, it is. Very important. Now, luckily, I have some friends who have been in the business quite a bit longer than me who are retailers. You know, mm -hmm. know what's going on and I can lean on for advice. And so I'm lucky to have that. And that's kind of that's kind of the story. It just wasn't practical and profitable At enough for us. Mm -hmm. So that was Ryan and Angela from RNA Music in Texas. Um, just explaining their relationship with Chapman Guitars. Now it is worth pointing out that my experience of working with guitar companies over the last seven years um, is that the way that Chapman have approached their guitar business isn't necessarily the right way to do it. Um, most of the, in fact, all of the companies that, that we dealt with, they had a UK representation. So, if we had an issue, you know, a guitar comes in and uh, it needs it needs some work straight out of the box, and it wasn't straightforward. What we would do is we would sh we would box it up, ship it straight back to the company, no questions asked. And all of the manufacturers that we've dealt with, that's the way it works. Now it seems to be that that doesn't happen with Chapman guitars. What seems to happen is it comes straight from the factory in Korea or wherever they're having them made. Uh, straight to the dealer and the reliance is on the dealer to sort out any problems. Now maybe that's the way that people sign up these contracts. That's not generally my experience of how retail works. It might be slightly different in America for Ryan and Angela but really here in the UK what happens is we have an agreement with a um, a, a manufacturer or a distributor to pro pro provide those goods but if those goods are deemed faulty straight out of the box then you know we would certainly talk to the company um, I mean a good example is we were quite a big Tanglewood I know Tanglewood is an acoustic guitar manufacturer rather than an, uh, a solid body guitar manufacturer but the way that Tanglewood um, did their business uh, and they are one of the biggest certainly in the UK than one of the biggest acoustic guitar man manufacturers we for a start we ne we very rarely had um, guitars go wrong I think in seven years I can count so I count on one hand the times that we've had an issue with a Tanglewood guitar and I don't think there's ever been an issue where we've opened up a box of a Tanglewood guitar and it's been faulty. Uh, what's tended to happen is that customers bought it and it, like I said, I think yeah, probably three or four times it's happened really over a period of time, maybe even you know within the guarantee period, uh, sometimes outside of the guarantee period, um, something's gone wrong and Tanglewood were always, I mean, I would have, the way it would work is that they would bring the guitar back into the shop I would have a look at it. If it was something simple, I would sort it out there and then myself, but I would let Tanglewood know that it had happened so that they know their failure rate, if there is, you know. But generally, if it was something a little bit more complicated or something that I've, I didn't feel quite comfortable doing, they would uh, arrange to pick it up, they would pay the carriage on collecting it, and we would then be quite happy to pay the carriage back that's the way it would tend to work. And it didn't just work with Tanglewood, that, that worked with all of our guitar manufacturers. Now clearly that's not what Chapman are expecting their dealers to do. Okay, so, and it is worth mentioning that there are only two places, two companies in the UK where you can buy a Chapman guitar. One is Anderton's, uh, or down in Guildford, and the other one is Guitar Guitar, who have got quite a few shops up and down the UK. So that, I mean, where we are in East Yorkshire, there is nobody. The nearest, the nearest Chapman Guitar shop is Newcastle, so I'd have to go up to Newcastle. Now, we always told customers that you shouldn't buy a guitar online without trying it first. 
Now I am, a, I am, I mean, we sold a lot of guitars online and the distance selling laws in the UK mean that you can actually send it back if you don't want it for whatever reason and that, you know, fair enough. But actually we, we always tried to, to instill in customers that the best way to, to buy a guitar is literally going into a shop and buying it and buying that one that you have played if you love it. Next question, Blaine Ludman. Hey y'all. As I expected, there's a lot of bad Chapman guitars being being by Guitar Center. I think he means being sold by Guitar Center. I had purchased two of the first batch before the new line, and I was going to buy another ML1, but when it got here, almost every fret had visible tooling marks and that black buffing compound deep enough you could feel and hear the strings catching on it. Uh, did you find any of this on any of your old Chapmans or any other brand from World Music? Schecter, ESP, etc. Because even if they're going to build guitars to the highest spec possible from the factory, <laughs> you're just adding bells and whistles and keep the shoddy craftsmanship. Why pay a thousand dollars on a guitar? That ESP would buy you a similar guitar with pickups options. Penny for your thoughts. Um, okay, and there was another question. Mm -hmm. Ben Haunting Scream One. What do you think of the new Pro Series Chapman guitars and what pickups would you recommend for jazz metal tone? So those are kind of two similar things. So. Right. Um, I really don't know anything about the new Pro model Chapmans. I have not touched them in person. Mm -hmm. and they have not touched me in person. And so I can't really comment firsthand. Sierra missed. All I know is what all you guys know and that you may be seeing on forums and you know comments on YouTube videos and there's a couple people making videos about ordering guitars and them having some flaws and so I can't really say anything about the new ones all I can really talk about is the original Korean line and yeah they had some problems you know just being honest we had we had some come in we had some come in that were fine and we mm -hmm. had some come in that had some issues <clears throat> you know we had some with uh, electronics issues, we had some with some cosmetic issues, we had some with, you know, they weren't real tidy like they should be. So, I, I would not be surprised if the same issues that we saw before are still happening. There's no reason why they wouldn't, I suppose. But the difference is, you know, I don't tend to see that stuff from... Schecter, for instance, because Schecter has a whole team of guys in the USA at the Schecter warehouse when Schecter guitars come in. There's a whole room full of dudes. They pull every single guitar out of the box and they go over it with a fine tooth comb, Great. file the frets, do any, any work that needs to be done. Schecter handles it before it goes to the dealers. Or if they have a guitar that comes in that's totally just jacked up from shipping or whatever, they, they get rid of it. There are some companies I know that will send guitars back to Korea and go, sorry guys, you screwed up this whole batch. Take them back, send us good ones. Mm -hmm. So it's not that every single guitar that comes out of that factory or any other factory is amazing. You're right. going to have hits and misses. But it's up to, you know, for most companies, there's a filter system before it hits dealers and stores. For Chapman, there's not a filter. I mean, we got guitars in there like, I can't sell this. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> or if I'm going to sell it, I'm going to sell it real cheap because it's got a cracked neck. What am I going to do with a cracked neck guitar? Mm -hmm. I can't exact. I can't send it back as a dealer. I couldn't send it back to Korea. Send one guitar back all the way to Korea to get it replaced. It's just that didn't work for us. So you know, you got to have. Uh, I think that's the real problem with Factory Direct by any company is there's a QC filter that is not there. Right, that other guitars have. PRS has that. Guitars come from the factory, go to PRS in Maryland, PRS. There's guys there that sort through everything and either get rid of or destroy or send back the ones that have some serious problems or, you know, do the final QC touch up, you know, file the nut slots, take care of any fret issues and whatever. So now uh, those are my thoughts is that you know, there's a not a filter system. For, for Chapman specifically, you know, unless it's the retailer. And Guitar Center is definitely not <laughs> not the not filter known, system. Not known for their... 
Yeah. Now, everyone that left our store, I mean, there's there are other stores in America that uh, sold them that if you looked on the forums and stuff, people were like, I had to send two back to get the good one. I had to return it three times, and I finally got a good one. That happened with other USA stores. Never happened with us. We always, I went above and beyond to make sure anyone that left here was in the best shape possible. But that fell on us to do that. So when Angela and Ryan from RNA Music said that they were seeing quite a few faulty uh, Chapman guitars, and clearly they're a smallish shop in Texas, um, then that would ring alarm bells to me. Um, and certainly from a, um, relying on the dealer to sort out your issues, um, what I would, I mean, as a retailer or an ex-retailer, what I would be expecting for that is not to be getting the standard sort of guitar margins that tends to happen across the board uh, in the UK, I would be looking for a much higher percentage, retail percentage, to accommodate the fact that we buy 10 guitars in and maybe so many of them may need some work doing to them before they can go out. If you're buying guitars, at the, shall we say, with the, the standard um, UK retail margins, then there's not enough margin to be able to warrant that. And I'm gonna to have to change my battery because it's about to go pop. And just, to, sorry, I had to change the battery because the battery just died. And just to give you another example uh, of the sort of quality control issue, um, it's not an issue really, the quality control that we used to see is um, there's a guitar company called Lag, who are a French company, uh, and a few years ago, we used to deal with them um, f through their, at the time, UK distributor, uh, who were a company called Barnes & Mullins. Now, Barnes & Mullins had put a lot of effort over, certainly a, a, lot, a number of years, into the distribution of lag. We took lag guitars, quality control was phenomenal. I mean, it's so much so that uh, in the factory, uh, they... Lag employed people actually in the factory to do final checks and we don't know whether they did final checks on literally every guitar But literally the guitars that came into the store Were, were, were tuned or just uh, clearly had been tuned uh, now. That's quite rare that you know the guitar is completely checked over um, And it was fantastic really Quite and the, the build quality was really really good. They were very reasonably priced and then what happened was that Gibson, who at the time uh, decided to take over the, di the di distributorship from this company called Barnes & Mullins, where they'd put all the effort in. And we didn't deal with Gibson, so we instantly lost access to the lag brand, uh, which was a shame. Um, and Gibson, over the next few years, did nothing with lag. In fact, we would get occasionally get customers ringing up and say, oh, I used to sell lag, I'm, I'm trying to find an X model or whatever. Um, and that, that, is, that, that relationship is now gone because obviously Gibson have had their own issues and I believe the distributorship now in the UK is with somebody else. But actually, while Barnes & Mullins had it, it was a phenomenal brand where, again, another brand, a bit like Tanglewood, there was, there, was, there was no quality control issues at all. So the reason for discussing the lag Barnes & Mullins Gibson uh, issue is that it seems that something similar has happened between Chapman Guitars and uh, a smaller shop, or I think there are a couple of shops, called Rift City. Now Rift, Rift City, I believe, of and now long, no longer trading. There has been quite a bit of criticism and there's a whole blog post by the owners of Rift City basically saying that what Rob Chapman had said in his um, truth video isn't necessarily true. You can read that and I'll put the link down below and make your own mind up. But it's worth pointing out that the, the sort of thing that happened with Barnes & Mullins and lag 
Chapman Guitars and Riff City is just business, really. You can't blame Rob Chapman for wanting to put his guitars in one of the biggest music shops in America because Guitar Center are a, are a massive American company. You know, that at the end of the day, that is just business. Is that con did that contribute to Riff City going uh, going out of business? I don't know. I don't know enough about um, what was going on there, really. But they certainly feel as though um, Rob Chapman and Chapman Guitars had done them a disservice. Maybe they shouldn't have got into a relationship with a guitar company that goes straight from the manufacturer to the shop. Um, that may have seemed naive. I don't know, really. That's not the sort of business that I would have entertained really you know th there are plenty of guitar brands out there you don't need one one particular guitar manufacturer and i'm sure a lot of guitar manufacturers think that they're the only guys on the on the on the planet we've we've seen this before with gibson and fender to some extent yes fender make great guitars gibson make great guitars are the are the guitar are they the the guitar brand that you want not necessarily i mean yes it may be easier to sell a fender or a gibson but there are so many other guitars out there that are as good, if not better. It just makes it slightly harder for the retailer to sell a different style of guitar, a different type of guitar. And my final point is to is to is just to discuss as to whether we think that the backlash which is happening against Rob Chapman is justified or not. And I would say no. It isn't. Now, clearly, as I've said before, this whole incident, maybe Rob hasn't managed it very well. Uh, and one or two, I mean, certainly one of the videos that I saw the other day had said that um, Anderton, Lee Anderton was distancing himself at the moment. I don't know whether that's true or not, really. Um, they certainly did a video together from Nam. Um, which you know so i'm not so sure that that is necessarily necessarily true now are the the claims of rob um bullying who knows really i mean you can make your own mind up on that I, what i would say is i don't think um you know in this world of social media there shouldn't be any bullying going on by anybody you know so you know if you if you were accusing Rob of bullying, then uh, and his fans are then threatening other YouTubers, um, then that's that's out of order, really. What you've got to remember is that behind behind every YouTube video is a real person. So you know m my feelings go out to Rob Chapman to some extent because. Um, I don't know if it has been causing him sleepless nights, but it may well have done. And I think that, you know, whenever you've got people bad mouthing other people, um, then it should stop, really. Um, now, you may consider that this video is contributing to the whole thing. Um, I mean, I'd like to say that I am uh, not a fan of. Of Rob Chapman um, I've my feelings generally are that um, he is quite entertaining um, on YouTube clearly you know to have that many followers um, you know people like his content really and certainly his relationship with Lee Anderton is about business they're business partners and but that's okay really you know um, the bullying thing worries me greatly um, and my feeling is that generally it should stop. Um, I'm not defending the way that Rob Chapman's handled this whole thing. Maybe if, if, if had he come out with an apology video uh, at the beginning, then maybe this whole thing would have gone away. Who knows, really? It's, it's, it's you know, but it's been rumbling on for about the last two months, really, and people keep. You know, we're all giving an opinion, really, uh, and there's lots of content out there. You just have to put Rob Chapman into um, the search facility on YouTube, and you get a whole load of stuff. Um, but the bullying thing is a worry um, because 
you know, you get, it seems that you get to a certain point uh, and we all make mistakes. You know, I've made mistakes in some of my videos. You know, not everything, you know, we do or say, um, we go through life making mistakes all the time. You know, all of us do that. Um, did Rob make a mistake? Well, it probably seems that he, maybe he did but, and how he handled it, but should he be vilified and uh, for that? Well, you know, I, I would probably argue that give the guy a break, really. I mean, certainly you could argue that he has helped the Keelan's KDH channel uh, because he's, he's, you know, he is growing. People are still re still watching. He's had, I think, 100,000 views on that video now. And that's probably since he put it back up. And I'm sure that some of the guitar community out there will have uh, an opinion on this ramble. Hopefully, I would like to see this backlash sort of stop, really. Um, because I think that all YouTubers can find themselves in this sort of position where, you know, for whatever reason, you know, uh, there there is, um, you know, people are bad-mouthing them. There's this, and not to get too hippie about this whole thing, but there could be, there is too much hate in the world. So um, my, feelings are if you can give give the guy a break maybe we just stop talking about it um says the guy who's just done a video on it anyway thanks so much for watching if you like what i do hit subscribe button uh and a thumbs up is all or a thumbs down if you don't like what i've said here you know by all means give me a thumbs down thumbs up thumbs down doesn't matter to me um you know it's all it's all interaction as far as youtube's concerned but um I thought I'd give a slightly different music retailer uh, take on it and I hope you found that useful. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. If you like what I do, hit subscribe and all that sort of stuff and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye bye.